Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to understand common angular change detection errors and we are going to learn how to fix them. Let's have a look at an example. On the last lesson we saw that we had here the material paginator up and running. But have a look, there's a problem. If we head over to the console we are going to see that we have here a change detection error. Expression changed after it has been checked error. This is a relatively common angular change detection error, we are going to understand it in detail and we are going to fix it together. Let's see exactly what's going on here. This has to do with the loading indicator in our template. In our loading indicator we have here an ngif expression and this is the source of the error. You are probably wondering at this point how can we be sure of that, that this is the part of the template that is causing the problem. Currently we cannot know that based on the message, it's not yet specific enough, this is going to be improved. But we can use the JavaScript debugger that is built in Chrome. Let's have a look at it here in a larger window where we have here the expression error. Another simple way would be to comment out multiple parts of the template until the error disappears. But this way it's probably going to be faster. So here is what we will do. We are going to head over here to the line where the debug error is being thrown and we're going to have a look at it. This line is being called when the error occurs. So let's add here a breakpoint and we are going to reload here our application. Now the error is going to be thrown and we will be able to walk through the stack to see what is happening. So let's go a couple of levels up the stack. You can see here for example that this is where the error is being thrown. We can see here the old value that was not being printed to the screen. If we hover here with the mouse we can see that the old value of an expression was false and the current value is true. This is what is causing the error. We are going to understand why this is a problem in a moment. Right now we simply want to identify what is the expression that is causing the error. So if we continue to scroll down the stack we are going to find here a component. Let's have a look at it. If we click here we are going to see that this happens when we are evaluating this expression. So this is how we identify which part of the template is causing the error. Here is the problem. Angular is trying to inspect this template and it's trying to build a view based on this template in order to display it on the screen. Now here is what is happening. When Angular starts building the view it will evaluate this expression here, data source loading and it's going to apply the async pipe. Let's have a look at what is the initial value of this expression. We're going to head over here to the lessons data source that contains the loading observable and we're going to see that the initial value of this expression is going to be false. So initially no data is getting loaded, so there is no loading indicator that is getting displayed. This is not being applied to the DOM. But then Angular does not stop here building the view. Angular is going to trigger the multiple lifecycle hooks during the view construction process. And one of them is going to be after view init that triggers here the ng after view init method. So this method we don't invoke it ourselves. This method is invoked by Angular while it's building the view based on the model, the course and whatever it gets from the data source. During that view construction process we want to make sure that the data only flows in one direction from the component into the DOM. We want to make sure that building the view does not itself trigger further modifications of the model. We want to make sure that the view construction process enforces unidirectional data flow. The data flows from our component into the DOM, but that process itself of building a view does not itself further update the data. And that's exactly what is going on here with this implementation of ng after view init. We are further updating the data. Let's see how. We are immediately emitting here a null value. That is going to trigger here the load lessons method and all of this happens synchronously while Angular is still constructing the view. And this load lessons method, what does it do? The first thing that it does is update the loading flag. 
and it's this update that it's problematic and that it's causing here our error. Let's understand why. Angular is trying to build the view, right? So it first evaluates this expression and it's false initially. Now Angular has run the view construction process and now has some DOM to be applied here to show the latest data to the user that is in sync with the data that we have here in our course component. Now that view construction process, which included here this call to ng after view init, has caused this flag to be set to true. So what should Angular display to the user? Should Angular display to the user this loading indicator? or not. There is no way for Angular to know if this loading indicator should have been displayed. And that's why Angular is throwing an error. This error is aimed at helping us prevent this view update itself problematic scenario that leads to UI code that is hard to maintain and reason about. This error is being thrown by the Angular development mode. Now that we have a good understanding about this error message and we understand why it's useful for us, why it's avoiding us from building user interfaces that will be hard to maintain and reason about in the long run, let's now understand how to fix this issue. This is coming right up in the next lesson.